Top 5 Brutal Torture Devices Number 5. Judas Cradle During medieval times in Europe, various cruel torture devices were invented for different purposes. Most importantly, these devices were invented and improved upon when the institution of the Inquisition was in full force during the late medieval period. The Judas Cradle is not to be confused with another similar torture device called the Horse that was popular in Prussia during the same period. Some of the most brutal torture devices used during this period include the Brazen Bull, Chair of Torture, Rack, Pier of Anguish, and others. What was the Judas Cradle torture device? The Judas Cradle was a pyramid-shaped wooden device onto which the victim was placed at the top of the pyramid. His or her hands and legs would be tied so that the weight could not be shifted elsewhere. The victim's feet were commonly tied with each other with the goal of increasing the pain whenever there was a movement of the feet. The torturers were given a specific amount of money as their fee. Their main task was to extract the required information or confession from the victims. The Judas the Cradle began to be used in 16th century Spain after the institution of Inquisition was established in the country. Thus, it was during the late and towards the end and after medieval times that this torture device was most commonly used. Number 4. Saw Torture The saw was widely used throughout the Middle Ages, mainly because the tools required were found in most houses and no complex devices were required. It was a cheap way to torture and kill a victim who was often accused of witchery, adultery, murder, blasphemy, or even theft. The saw was widely used throughout the Middle Ages, mainly because the tools required were found in most houses and no complex devices were required. It was a cheap way to torture and kill a victim who was often accused of witchery, adultery, murder, blasphemy, or even theft. The victim was tied to an inverted position. This had several benefits. First, it assured sufficient blood diverted to the brain. Second, it slowed down the loss of blood. And third, it humiliated the victim. Depending on the victim and torturer, this torture could last several hours. When a confession was required, the victim was frequently forced to watch someone else be subject to this method. If he didn't confess, he'd be slowly cut in half. During the Inquisition, this method became even more popular as the Inquisitors traveled from village to village, often without any torture devices at their disposal. While some victims were cut completely in half as a symbolical gesture, most had only up to their abdomen cut. This was done to prolong the time of death. Number 3. The Rack The rack is a torture device consisting of a rectangular, usually wooden frame, slightly raised from the ground with a roller at one or both ends. The victim's ankles are fastened to one roller and the wrists are chained to the other. As the interrogation progresses, a handle and ratchet mechanism attached to the top roller are used to very gradually retract the chains, slowly increasing the strain on the prisoner's shoulders, hips, knees, and elbows, and causing excruciating pain. By means of pulleys and levers, this roller could be rotated on its own axis, thus straining the ropes until the sufferer's joints were dislocated and eventually separated. The rack in Roman sources was referred to with the name equulis, the word fidicula. More commonly, the name of a small lyre or stringed instrument was used to describe a similar torture device, although its exact design has been lows. Number 2. The Spanish Tickler this terrible device was used in most of Europe during the Middle Ages. It's a very simple instrument that was used to tear a victim's skin apart. Due to its shape, neither bones nor muscles were spared. The victim was naked and tied making him or her completely defenseless. Then the torturers began the, sometimes public, act of mutilating the victim. They often began with the limbs and slowly moved into the chest, back, neck, and finally the face. In short, the Spanish tickler or cat's paw is nothing but an extension to the torturer's hand. The spikes were sharp enough to tear anything in their path. This instrument was very common in Spain, mostly during the Spanish Inquisition. Though its use in France and England is well recorded, they often adopted different torture methods. The Spanish tickler varied in shape and size. Some were long and had a pole attached to the rear so the torturer could tear the skin from a distance, while others were nothing but the claw itself. 
Depending on the instrument, the torture varied. This torture often resulted in death, but some victims were spared or convicted to a shorter torture session. Number 1. The Breaking Wheel The Breaking Wheel or Execution Wheel, also known as the Wheel of Catherine, Catherine Wheel, or simply the Wheel, was a torture method used for public execution primarily in Europe from antiquity through the Middle Ages into the early modern period by breaking the bones of a criminal or bludgeoning them to death. The practice was abolished in Bavaria in 1813 and in the Electorate of Hesse in 1836. The last known execution by the wheel took place in Prussia in 1841. In the Holy Roman Empire, it was a mirror punishment for highwaymen and street thieves and was set out in the Saxon Spiegel for murder and arson that resulted in fatalities. Those convicted as murderers, rapists, traitors, and slash or robbers to be executed by the wheel, sometimes termed to be wheeled or broken on the wheel, would be taken to a public stage scaffold site and tied to the floor. The execution wheel was typically a large wooden spoked wheel, the same as was used on wooden transport carts and carriages, often with iron rim, sometimes purposely modified with a rectangular iron thrust attached and extending blade-like from part of the rim. The primary goal of the first act was the agonizing mutilation of the body, not death. Therefore, the most common form would start with breaking the leg bones. To this end, the executioner dropped the execution wheel on the shin bones of the convicted person and then worked his way up to the arms. Here, rhythm and number of beatings were prescribed in each case, sometimes also the number of spokes on the wheel. To increase its effect, often sharp-edged timbers were placed under the convict's joints. Later, there were devices in which the convicted person could be harnessed. Although not commonplace, the executioner could be instructed to execute the convicted person at the end of the first act, by aiming for the neck or heart in a coup de grace. Even less often, this occurred immediately from the start.